Okay, let's have a look at grading criteria. So I'm assuming in this video you're already familiar with formula questions, you're happy setting up a question with different variables and evaluating those answers just as normal numerical answers, so maybe against uh, the answer, and that you're familiar with the way that the formula questions are work. What I want to develop in this video is the whole idea of grading criteria. And what they let you do is evaluate the student answers either using a formula or by comparing them with the formula against other answers the student has already given. So let's have a look at this question and we'll see what I mean. So in this question, it's the same one that we've been using so far, fill in the blanks for the composition of some alkane, and all of the variables are the same, and the question part one is the same, with one exception, I've added a grading criterion. So what you probably didn't realize is that this was checking to see whether the relative error of each of these against each of these was less than the specified amount. So that's a Boolean test and can either return true or false. If it returns true, you get the grade. If it returns false, you get a zero, you get. So actually the grading criterion are always used, but now we're gonna start editing them and use them more fully. And so in this case, I've just put in a second provision. I've changed the relative error to be greater, or sorry, less than a thousand meaning that the error is almost irre irrelevant now. The number that they put in doesn't really matter because it's going to have to fit in with this thousand. But that answer number three, so this answer here, has to equal C. So everything in this, in the grading criteria, since there's more than one now, is a Boolean test that's going to return either a one or a zero. And then we can modify that using the criteria further, but it will return a one or a zero. And the total number that this computes to will give you the grade out of one. So in this case, I'm saying that the error has to be less than a thousand and number three, answer number three has to be equal to C. If I multiply that by 0 0.7, then the most the students can get is 0.7 out of one. But I'm gonna put in a separate criteria. So 0 0.3, uh, well, put in the criteria first and then we'll worry about the weighting of it. So answer number four has to be equal to H. And I'm going to multiply that by 0 0.3. And it's important to be careful here. The things that happen inside the brackets go first. So if I were to have moved that bracket out here, it would be seeing if four was equal to three or it was equal to H multiplied by 0.3. And you can create quite a bit of hassle if you're not very careful about where your brackets go. Anyway, let's save this and have a look and see what it's gonna do. So save changes, continue editing. And now it's time for a preview. And it is the same question that we've had. Um, so we'll fill in the correct responses. And if we check them, we'll see it's still giving us all the marks for that. Let's start again. So now I know that the error on these is less than a thousand. So if I fill in the correct responses, and if I change these, if I put them out by a factor of 10 and I submit and finish, I can still let them see, I'm still getting full marks. So those answers aren't really relevant to determining the marks of the question. On the other hand, I can see that if I change this answer and I submit and finish, I'm now only getting 0.7 out of 10 because this 0.3 I am not getting. Or if you want to start again and once one more look at it, this is for methane, so fill in the correct responses. And if I make this the wrong answer, then I'm only going to get 0.3 out of 10. So the marks are distributed between these two boxes and these boxes aren't relevant. You can use any set of Boolean logic. So we could say that the answer has to be that. And rather than saying multiplied by, we could say and that. And we could say and that. And now we have a situation where it has to be an error of less than a thousand and answer three has to be equal to C and answer four has to be equal to H. And if either of those are incorrect or any of those three are incorrect, then your and is going to return a false. You can also add in or. So if you say this or this, well then it will return if one of them is true or both of them are true, 
It's an OR, not an exclusive OR. So we have a little bit more power over our grading criterion. It does become a little bit limited though what you can put into a single string of text. So the next thing we're going to look at is the grading variables. And these are variables that allow you to assess the numbers that are put in here before putting them in here. Essentially it allows you to make multiple lines of different criteria, different possibilities, and then fit them into your actual grading criterion. So let's have a look at another question where I have done that. So we'll cancel this for now and we'll have a look at the use of grading criterion. So in this question, again, same question, fill in the blanks for the combustion of an alkane. Instead of, and always remember to see these, you have to click show more, but instead of evaluating the parts just as part of the answer to check do they have the relative error, I've set up five different criterion, and actually you can call them whatever you want. It's just useful to keep call them criterion. Criterion one is that answer zero is equal to O, answer criterion two and so on and so forth. So in this case, I've evenly weighted the marks for meeting each one of those criteria. If this is true, it'll return a one. If it's false, it'll return a zero. And the total mark that they're gonna get is gonna be 0 0.2 for each one of the correct answers. I can, of course, extend further, but let's consider this for a moment. So I could change the weighting by just simply changing the multiple, or I could combine two of them. So I could say 0 0.4 multiplied by criterion 1, 0 0.4 times criterion 1, and criterion 2. And now they have to get both criterion 1 and criterion 2 correct, or meet both of those criteria in order to be uh, to get that portion of the marks. So we can now control the relative weighting of marks for different parts of the section and you can group sections together to say that they must get both parts right to get any marks for that part or you can put in ORs. There's a lot of control but there is more. Another possibility though is that the student gets the name of the alkane wrong so they think that instead of it being four carbons it's three carbons or so on and so forth and under our current regime where we just have our five different criteria lined up then we're going to penalize them. They'll lose 100% of the marks just for getting the name wrong, even though they've got all the rest of the math correct. So how do we make it a little bit fairer? Well, we need to put in some more criterion. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put our first set of criterion in brackets there. I'm going to say that we're going to return the maximum of either do they meet that first one, or I'm going to put in space for a second set of criteria and then a closed parenthesis. So a lot of functions are available within this max, min, so on and so forth. Let's think about what we want to do here. Well, criterion number six, if they've got C wrong, but they've got all the rest of it right, well then their number of hydrogens, so their underscore four should be equal to their number of carbons, which was underscore three, as you can see down here, multiplied by uh, 2 plus 2. So now we can evaluate do they have the right number of hydrogens for the number of carbons that they have put in regardless of whether they actually got the number of carbons right. And we can move through this and evaluate each of their different answers with respect to what they've put in for number 3. So in the case of the number of oxygens underscore 0 if we go all the way back up to the top, we can see the formula for the number of oxygens should be equal to the number of carbons plus the number of hydrogens divided by four. So it should be equal to underscore three plus underscore uh, four divided by four. And so on and so forth. So we can put in a criterion number uh, for criterion number eight and nine for answers uh, one and two over here. So eight and criterion nine. And in that case, uh, underscore one should be equal to underscore three. And underscore 
underscore two should be equal to underscore four divided by two. And now we're going to save that and see, oh no, sorry, before we save that, we have to put in that set of criteria. So because they've got the name wrong, we're going to give them out of 80%. So we'll say criterion six times uh, 0 0.2 plus criterion seven times 0 0.2 plus criterion eight times 0 0.2 plus criterion nine times 0 0.2. And at this point you might be saying to yourself, my God, Cormac, this is a lot of effort. Is it worth it? But the nice thing about it is that once you have it done once, it creates a lot of different possible questions and they're graded in a way that is consistent with the way you normally grade a paper test. So you're not sacrificing uh, just because you're putting it into Moodle. So let's give that a quick save and check that I don't have any errors in it. One of the hardest parts of this is troubleshooting your errors and you can see I've misspelled criterion. So you have to be really careful when you are doing this. And sometimes if you get really stuck, it's helpful to find somebody else or just to walk away for a while and come back to it. Um, because it can become very frustrating. Small bits of syntax can produce large changes. And you can see it's saved successfully there now. So let's preview it and see what happens. So we'll fill in the correct responses and we'll check. And we still get one out of one. Now, Remember those numbers, four, 10, six and a half, four, five. And see what happens if we fill them in for the wrong one. So four, 10, 6.5, five, four and five. And what we see is now it's giving us eight out of 10 because it's marking the partially correct. It's marking the answers that we've put into box, these boxes against the number of carbons that we thought were in our molecule. Okay, I'm going to leave it here. There's actually much more to grading variables, but I think this is a long enough video for now. If you have any questions, post them below. If you want me to send you out these questions, as I say, email. Uh, if you're looking for more information or things about syntax or that kind of thing, the guys who created these questions, moodleformulas.org, are the place to go. That's all for now. Thanks. Bye.